Hello and welcome to RTC60 on Channel 4. To kick off our episode, Got Game is showing a sports review of the sports season so far. Taylor Beck on Beck Specs has more hot seat questions for the high schoolers. The senior spotlight of the week is senior Bryce Roberts. And finally, the community video is the Antique Roadshow for Mental Health America for Fulton County. Thank you for watching and hopefully you enjoy. Welcome to Got Game. This week we will be reviewing the high school sports spring season. We will be showing you some clips because the sports teams have been in action for about a month now and we will be updating you on Zebra Sports. The Rochester boys golf team has had a rough start to their season. They are currently winless after getting 10th place in the Huntington North Invitational this past Saturday. This season they have a new coaching staff, Monty Hoffman and Lyle Langenfelter. They started out their season missing two of their starters from last year, but their scores are improving as the season progresses. There are some underclassmen that have done a great job stepping up and filling in some big roles that will help the golf team later in the season. They have had the opportunity to play at some big golf courses like the Twin Lakes Golf Course and the Rock Hollow Invitational. We would like to wish the golf team good luck as they finish out their season. The baseball team is already 13 games into their season. Their current record is 9-4 after beating Peru twice in a doubleheader this past Saturday. They started off the season by beating Caston, who was always a tough game. Then they defeated Winnemac, who was a sectional opponent. Their first doubleheader they split with John Glenn. The Zebras had a tough loss to Plymouth on a night when the temperatures dropped greatly. Pitching for the Zebras this season are Aaron Stewart, John O'Dell, Tanner Hampton, Cyrus Holland, and Andrew Feldman, the freshman, with two of the nine wins. The Zebras were averaging a 375 batting average at one point in their season, and now they're averaging nine runs per game. Conference starts Wednesday, April 25th, with an away game at Northfield. We would like to wish the baseball team good luck as their season continues. The track team has an advantage this season. Many of their meets are at home. So far, the girls' record is 1-1-3, one, one, and, and the boys are 2-3. and three. Both teams continue to improve as the season progresses. Track season usually goes by quickly, with many meets per week, and sectionals are less than a month away. Track is similar to golf and swimming when it comes to sectionals because you can qualify as a team or individually. To start off their season, the girls tied against John Glenn, but the boys lost. In their second meet, the girls and boys both beat Manchester, but lost to Wabash. We would like to wish the girls and boys track team good luck with the rest of their meets. Unlike the track team, the Lady Zebra tennis team spends most of their time on the road. They only have six total home matches this season. The girls tennis team is 2-4 and four after losing to Triton last week. Number one singles is senior Michaela Stockberger. Number two singles is junior Maddie Lewis. When it comes to pairing up for doubles, the Lady Z's rotate between the rest of the team throughout the season. The tennis team will have their conference invitational on April 28th. Sectionals are only just a month away for the Lady Z's tennis team starting on May 16th. We would like to wish the tennis team good luck as they travel to Knox to play the Knox Invite and good luck as they travel on the road for the next seven matches. The Rochester Lady Zebras are 13 games into their season and still have yet to lose. They are currently ranked number two in the Class 2A state and are averaging 12 runs a game. The Lady Zs had a big weekend after beating Lewis Cass 9-5 on Friday and winning the Wawa C Invitational after beating Wawa C and South Bend Clay by one run each. 
There are nine returning starters on this team, three seniors, three juniors, and three sophomores. We would like to wish the Lady Z's good luck as they are on the road for the next seven games of their season. Starting next week is the beginning of conference, and the softball team has been conference champions for the past three years, so they hope to continue the streak. That's all I have for you on Got Game. Hopefully you can go see some of the spring sports in action. I will see you next week. Hi, my name is Taylor Beck, and today on Beck Specs, we have another episode of Hot Seat for you, and we're going to go around high school and ask a bunch of wacky questions and see if we can get some wacky responses. I'm Thomas Sutton of the class of 2012. I'm Dennis Mersch, and in the class of 2012. My name is Tristan Miller. My name is Karina Smith. My name is Kristen Childers. Probably a Wampa from Star Wars would probably be my choice. They're uh, endangered, actually, on the planet Hoth, if you didn't know. Um, yeah, so please donate for them. My favorite animal is a penguin. My favorite animal is a dog. My favorite animal is a dog. My favorite animal would have to be a dog. My favorite cartoon, I did not watch cartoons as a kid. I watched a lot of the History Channel, but probably Tom and Jerry. My favorite cartoon as a kid would have to be the Looney Tunes because Bugs Bunny just outsmarts everybody. My favorite cartoon is probably Looney Tunes and stuff like that. Uh, my favorite cartoon as a kid was Arthur. My favorite cartoon as a kid was probably Ed, Ed and Eddie. My favorite celebrity would probably be Albert Einstein, you know. Why? The hair. It's the hair. It's godlike hair. My favorite celebrity would have to be Seth MacFarlane. Just because no one can could have came up with a better idea than Family Guy. My favorite celebrity is probably Lil Wayne and Young Money. Because I like their music. My favorite celebrity would have to be Gerard Butler. I don't know. <laughs> My favorite celebrity would probably have to be uh, Mel Strep because she's, she's a pretty good actress. I would probably go back to um, Victorian England. I don't know why, just first thing that popped in my head. Well, if I could go back in time, I would go back before like uh, cavemen and people knew how to, what fire was because then I'd create it and then I would be famous. I would probably go back like just 20 years and so I could come out with like songs that no one's came out with but I know them. I would probably go back in time to um, probably back in ancient Greece because I love the mythology. Happy the most, probably um, kittens and walks on the beach. Do it for me. That's nice and. Um, like just picnics under the stars are nice too. What makes me happy the most would be long walks on the beach with a uh, popsicle in my hand and just kind of gazing out at the lake. What makes me happy the most is hanging out with my friends. Friends! What makes me happy the most? Um, my friends, they always make me laugh. They know how to make me laugh when I'm really down. Hey, that's the hot seat for this week. I'm Taylor Beck, and tune in next time.
Uh, I'm Bryce Roberts. I'm a senior. Um, for the past four years, I've been a part of wrestling and football. Uh, my favorite class is theater arts. Um, I like Miss Kelsey a lot. She's real fun. And just all of her classes actually are my favorite classes. My favorite teacher probably is Mr. Guard because he's my wrestling coach also. And he's just really a good guy to be around. My favorite senior memory would have to be playing football at um, Ball State University my senior year. I would like to be remembered as a pretty fun and carefree guy and just a nice guy to be around that everyone liked. After high school, I plan on going to Manchester and becoming or being a part of criminal justice. It's kind of a bittersweet thing when I think about graduation. I'm happy that we're, I'm getting it over with, but it's also going to be pretty sad to see all my friends go. In 20 years, I see myself living out my criminal justice degree by being like a detective or maybe a U.S. Marshal and having a family. My name is Bryce Roberts, and I am proud to be a zebra. Jan Sawyer and I am the president of Mental Health America of Fulton County and to, uh, we are having an antique show and I would like to tell people it's wonderful. We do hold this event every year. Uh, this is uh, the 14th annual. The next year will be 15th annual so I encourage you all to come out next year. It's held the first uh, weekend in March. Uh, I would like to tell you a little bit about mental health. It's a wonderful organization. Its um, mission is to promote wellness um, in the mental health field and to educate people about mental illness. Um, to, we're trying to remove stigma and things that are attached to mental health that um, people for years have um, you know, frowned upon, and we are trying to make it a positive um, issue and so that people aren't afraid to look for help when they have problems like this. Um, we have a board. We're run by a board of directors. Um, and if you would like to join the board, that would be wonderful. Uh, we are in the phone book, and you can um, call the mental health office if, if you are interested in doing anything with us at all or volunteering for any events that we should have. We do have an executive director. Her name is Diana Rahm, and she works up you know, part-time, and she does a really nice job in getting people what they need. We do not service people as far as giving you mental health services, but we will find a place for you to go. So I need to tell you that that's the difference between our service and we are not a counseling service, but we can get you to someone if you need help. Um, I love being on the board. I love being president. We have a really nice group of ladies and, and their husbands, our husbands, help us quite a bit. Um, it's a worthwhile project, and it has been in Fulton County for a very long time. I think probably since the early 50s would be my guess. And I think in the mid-60s, they started having a paid executive director, who was Patricia Wagner, if anybody remembers her from long ago. Um, and once again, I thank you for your time, and I would like to have your support, anybody's support for Mental Health America of Fulton County. Thank you. I'm Diana Rahm and I'm the Executive Director for Fulton County Mental Health and this is our 14th annual 
antique show and sale. We host, we host this every year. It's our main fundraiser, and we are very thankful for all the people who have come out and make this such a great success. We have probably 16 vendors here of all sorts of uh, antiques. We have dolls and toys, sports memorabilia. We have a lot of Rochester and Lake Manitou memorabilia and jewelry and I think there's quite a bit of some army memorabilia if you're into that and our vendors here are very very helpful and very knowledgeable about what they sell and will give you some you know tips on what you're looking for and we just really we enjoy working with these people we have the same ones who come I think year after year so but let me tell you a little bit about mental health we are an advocacy group located here in Rochester. We are in the Four County Building, and our number is 223-6870. And if you have any questions at all about some mental health issues or where you would like need to go to get more information or help with these, we are who you call. You can call our office. I only work part-time, but I will sure get back to you if you leave a message if I'm not in. And we also appreciate everyone who's helped us out this year with our antique show. WROI has come out and done some uh, interviews with us. Also, Gloria Calhoun in the Streamliner restaurant. She is in charge of our food, our concessions. We have wonderful food here. Also, we thank Culligan. Culligan donated their water to us. Dean Foods has made a donation. And McDonald's. So we really appreciate all the things that they do for us. Not only Fulton County Mental Health, but our community as well. Very has a couple of issues that can be cleaned up. You have to be very, very careful right. when you do. Uh, it was bottled by the PepsiCo Bottling Company out of Plentywood, Montana, so it's been around for a long time. That's 1943 during the war years, okay. Uh, in this condition, probably about $15 because it says Mountain Surf. It was just a regular Pepsi bottle, you know, three, or f three to five bucks. Because it says fountain surf, it's got the directions on the back, 15 to 25. Bottle collection will love that. Wow, lunch bottles. It's a table cover. Again, it was not meant to be, and it is not uh, in any way, shape, or form derogatory. It was just a sign of the time to put in a nice, colorful table cover. Thank you. And this one's an excellent shape, $65. That's wonderful. <laughs> wow. Of course, these are old movie posters. Not old movie posters, but movie posters from days gone by. Oh, my. Good news is there... <laughs> They're nice. Bad news is they're new. They're reproductions. Yeah. 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 Be real good shape. They're old. Yeah. It's a little rough on the edges, but uh, one of the dealers has one out there for sale. I don't know what he has on it. Um, if you get a frame, straighten it out. It's probably worth about twenty-five to thirty-five dollars. Very collectors would like these, and they use them for accent pieces and they decorate the rooms. So that's a good thing there. Early kitchenware. Who knows what that is? What? It's a sharpener. My sharpener. Yeah, yeah. yeah. How about this? Didn't see that one. <laughs> the food chopper. Oh. Yeah, you push that on, see? I suppose to chop.
Hi, my name is Terry Lee. I'm the Executive Director of Fulton Economic Development Corporation. At Fulton Economic Development Corporation, our mission is to attract and retain business and industry to the county. One of the ways we do this is by improving the workforce in Fulton County through partnerships with schools and employers to ensure the workers of today and tomorrow have the requisite skills to succeed. Our initiative is called the Learn Network. It is the most comprehensive collaboration of local educators, local business, and local industry. Today, Fulton County residents can access information on business training, career building, life skills classes, local Ivy Tech class listings, and schedules all in one location, learnnetwork.org. LearnNetwork.org is a resource that showcases the vast opportunities you have right here in Fulton County. Opportunities to learn, to grow, to improve your future today. LearnNetwork.org has also partnered with Indiana Career Connect. No jobs in Fulton County? Take a look. Up-to-date job listings right here in Fulton County. Available 24 hours per day, 7 days per week. The jobs are here. Are you ready? LearnNetwork.org and our local partners can help you prepare for your next job. As part of the Learn Network, local business and industry leaders have agreed to share a little bit about their companies and to offer an unprecedented look into what they are expecting from individuals who apply for a job with their companies. We encourage anyone in the job market to watch closely and to make an honest personal assessment. If your skills don't match up, we are here to help. Remember the website, www.learnnetwork.org. It is an unbelievable asset to this community and your guide to improving your future. My name is Matt Sutton. I'm the Vice President of Sales and Marketing for RapidView and the General Manager of r, &R Visual here in Fulton County. RapidView and r, &R Visual are two companies that are based out of the same location. r, &R Visual started in 1991 and conducts sewer inspections all over the world. They also do inspections of water, sanitary sewer, uh, storm lines, petrochemical, nuclear, uh, anything, basically any underground infrastructure that needs inspected from a, from a distance remotely, we can do that with robotics. RapidView, on the other hand, is kind of an outgrowth of r, r Visual, where we sell this equipment throughout North America and the Caribbean islands. Our customers are primarily cities and contractors who work for cities. For r, &R Visual, we'll work for cities to inspect their infrastructure. Uh, when we're selling equipment to contractors who work for cities, we will sell directly to them or the cities themselves if they have their own inspection program and purchase equipment. We have many different uh, positions within our company from low-skilled laborers all the way up to uh, trained electronics technicians. We have um, people who go out and inspect pipes. We call them technicians. They have a certain degree of training within our industry. All our uh, service employees also have uh, safety training, 10-hour OSHA training, they have uh, HAZWOPR, they have um, confined space, bloodborne pathogens training to allow the, equip them to work safely in those environments. Um, some of our managerial staff have college degrees, uh, some have advanced degrees. We also have people who have electronics degrees and training from the military who work in our, in our service centers. Potential employees for us um, need to be intelligent, they need to be creative, uh, they need to be hardworking, and they need to be honest. And more importantly than anything, they need to be reliable because so many of our jobs happen away from Fulton County. We need to be able to count on somebody to be there to roll out at 6 a.m. to go to Augusta, Georgia for you know two weeks. Um, so you know all our efforts as a company are focused on making those projects happen and if we don't have the right human resources in place who are reliable enough to deliver, you know, reliable enough to show up uh, when they need to be here and ready to work, then our entire business suffers. Our process typically, say for instance, we were gonna hire someone for our service crews. We would put an ad in the paper and then people would respond to it. It's important to understand that when we put an ad in the paper, um, we expect the directions in that ad to be followed exactly. A lot of times people won't follow directions when they, when they see an ad in the paper and that is usually an automatic um, disqualification for us. So for instance, if we say, please send a resume or work history to a specific email, if the person stops by, they didn't follow directions. If they fax it in, they didn't follow directions. So that kind of weeds out people who just right out of the gate don't like to follow, follow directions. We find that some people are out there telling people though, um, you know, you, you should be face-to-face -face when you hand over your application or your resume. Now that's 
that's counterintuitive to what we believe because we want them to follow the directions that we give them. And we also want to be able to meet them on our terms, not their terms. So when they stop by, we might not have time to talk to them. And it's unfortunate, but we're doing business every day. So they need to respect the fact that, you know, we have to do our jobs on a daily basis and they should schedule a, a, a meeting with us and not expect to walk in the door and be able to sit down and have a 45 minute conversation with us regarding a job that we have posted. Um, once that's happened, then the department managers will go through the resumes and pick their best. We actually rank them. So say we get 15 resumes, we'll go through and each of us will rank maybe four or five um, acceptable candidates that we find from the resume. Um, and then we'll put them together and then that's our group of people that we might interview. Um, it's important to understand on resumes and work histories, for instance, for us, they don't need to be elaborate, they don't need to be fancy, but they need to be correct and they need to use proper, capital, proper capitalization, proper grammar, because what happens is, for instance, in our service crews, when, when they're out on the road, they're entering information into a database. And that database then is given to an engineering firm or a city, and they use that to do their planning. It's important to understand that right off the bat, when that person's filling out that database, we know it's going to be correct. We know they're going to use proper cap capitalization. We know that we're going to appear professional to our customer because our employees are doing a professional job. Once um, those are selected, they're called, and then they're brought in for an interview. And we actually use an interview form for our process. And usually there's three people in that, in that interview process. So there'll be uh, the president of the company, the operations manager, and myself. And we'll sit down with them and, and go through a list. And what we try to do is situationally talk about their skills. So for instance, in r, &R Visual, it's important that someone have some degree of mechanical ability. So we'll rate them on a scale to one to five. Um, and for instance, we, we give them ideas. We'll say, okay, uh, you know, do you change your own oil in your car? Are you capable of doing this? Can you change your own brakes? Can you rebuild an engine? Do you never touch it? Do you have everybody else do it? Um, and we use those situations to try to determine you know, kind of where they fall in that, in that uh, scale of one to five. We do the same thing with um, computer ability, uh, ability to use computers. Now, nobody here needs to be a programmer, but we need to be able to send emails and we need to be able to enter information into databases. And it's an important skill that we need to make sure people have. We also um, work with electronics um, often, so it's helpful if some of our employees would have uh, some of that basic skills, be able to read a multimeter, be able to um, understand schematics. But you know, those, those people are, are hard to find usually, so what we do is we end up teaching them rudimentary electronics when they, when they come to work for us. We do the same thing on customer service. So it's interesting for us, whenever we're in the field, we're actually dealing with customers eight hours a day. So we might have a customer in the truck when we're doing an inspection. So we always have that interface with customers. We're not like a construction crew, which is out and can, can do their own thing for eight hours and then the customer stops by and just checks on the progress. Our guys a lot of times uh, are accompanied by our customers. So we need to have a professional interaction um, eight hours a day with those people. So it's important to understand you know, what kind of experience that potential candidate might have in dealing with the public and dealing with other customers. From there we go into um, sort of their physical ability and their, their uh, position to travel, which are two things that are important to us. Um, for instance, you know, we need somebody who can uh, lift 100 pounds because some of our equipment is very heavy. Um, we need somebody who can work in the weather, can work outside during the winter months if, if required um, and in the rain. Then we also need people who are suitable for high security projects. So we would need to understand if there was any felonies in someone's past that would disqualify them from getting on site, say an Air Force base or a Marine base or inside a prison. Um, those are things that can actually disqualify candidates because we can't use them on projects. Um, one of the other things that are really important to us is the, the ability for an employee to travel. We have employees who travel uh, two weeks at a stint and then they'll come home and we'll replace them with another employee who will travel then for two weeks before they come home. Um, employees who can travel longer periods of time are useful to us because they can go on a project and they can stay on a project until it's completion. And, but it's important for people to understand what their ability to travel is. We find that a lot of candidates, um, especially candidates who are you know, actively and aggressively looking for a job, 
might overestimate the, abil the amount of time that they could be away from home, uh, which is so easy to do, but we need them to be honest. And so we, we really ask them a lot of questions about that. And before we make a commitment for somebody to take a job, we'll always talk to them, have them talk to their family and understand, you know, I'm, I'm going to be away for two weeks. Is this okay? Um, so that everybody, everybody's on board because the employee doesn't need that pressure back home as well as the pressure of actually completing the project out in the field. So. And then we go on to um, some psychological or behavioral type questions where we'll talk to them about their challenges they might have had at work. We'll ask them how they view themselves and how their uh, peers might view them in the workplace. Um, and then we'll ask them about um, problems they might have had and how they overcame those challenges. And then we'll, uh, we'll finish up the interview typically with um, a, a discussion about why they think they would be appropriate for the job. And what I find is a lot of people that come in to interview for us either have not had any experience with those behavioral type questions or they're just ill prepared to answer them. And it's important for somebody who would be going into a position, going into a, an interview process to critically think about your work history at other places so that you understood and maybe had a few things in mind about um, a challenge at work that you overcame. Some, some, you know, something happened on, if you're working in manufacturing, something happened on the line, this is how we corrected it, this is how we changed it, or we had an emergency situation here, and this is how we took care of it. Um, it's important to have those things, and it's important for us to try to talk about those things because we're looking for creativity and problem solving and responsibility in answering those questions. So if you have someone who's never, who doesn't believe they've ever encountered a challenge, um, they're obviously not engaged in the work process where they were in the past. They're not, they're not actively thinking through things and that's important for us because every day is a challenge for us. Every, every day is something different. Um, once that's done, uh, then we will then assemble all the candidates and all our notes about the candidates and we'll usually make a selection. It's in, you know, when you talk about um, things that are important for a, uh, for a prospective employee to know when they walk in the door for an interview process, it's important to be dressed appropriately. You know, you don't have to, for us, for instance, you don't have to be wearing a suit and tie, but you don't need to come in in a t-shirt and shorts. You know, you want to be respectful of um, our business and respectful of yourself enough to come in and, and kind of look the part for the job that you're going to be working. Um, at least wear like a collared shirt and khakis. You know, so that uh, you know, we know that you take yourself seriously. That's important. Um, you also shouldn't use profanity. You shouldn't um, uh, make any sort of uh, inappropriate jokes during the interview. And and you should be here and present during the interview and respond to questions. And that that more than anything, how people respond to questions when you ask them tells you a lot about their character and tells you a lot about their thought process and that's basically what an interview is is us trying to weed out you know people who we feel you know aren't up to the task and another thing as an employer what we've discovered is we want to find people who fit in with our culture because we have a specific culture here at R&R Visual and Rapid View just like every other business and it's so much easier if you can find an employee who kind of fits that culture you know, around here in R&R &R Visual, many people like to hunt and fish. Um, a lot of the guys go after work and, and go together after they spend eight hours in the field, they'll go together and go hunting and fishing. And it tends to add to that cohesiveness of the group and it's just your culture. So why if you can't really fight it, you, you might as well try to find somebody that fits in. And, and that's we found that to be really important. You know, I might have somebody that walks in the door with a two-year associate's degree in sociology um, but I'm not going to find somebody that has a two-year associate's degree in sewer inspection. So what I'm looking for, a, a degree of any sort, um, advanced training, certificates, um, any kind of accredited course that they've completed up to and including a master's degree is an indication that they can undertake a task and they can complete it. Um, it's an indication that they can work in an academic environment which means that they can read and write effectively, that they can um, use correct, typically use correct grammar, so that they can research topics. Um, I found in my own experience, um, you know, I have a bachelor's and a master's degree. Most of the things that I learned when I was in college 
I'm not putting to use every day, but what I am using are the skills that I had to attain to be able to graduate, like researching, using the computer, creative problem solving, all those things. It's, college teaches you how to learn as, as well as provide you with information. Now the information that I got provided for my MBA 10 years ago is not really relevant to business today, but the skills I had to use to attain that degree still are applicable. So um, that's important to understand. And education is something that um, no one can ever take away from you either. I mean, in a, in a job market like this that we're faced with, you're gonna find candidates. We just recently hired a candidate that um, has a degree from Notre Dame. Uh, he is a, an attractive candidate because we know that he has completed that degree program effectively and we assume that that is going to make him a great employee and so far it has. Um, the difference is you're now facing, you're, you're meeting these people in the interview room who have college degrees and you're matching them up against people who don't. And it's just natural for us as an employer to assume um, that we should go with the, with the degreed individual because they've, they've attained something, you know, something that can't be taken away. We're always interested in uh, meeting potential candidates. Um, I would suggest that if they'd like to submit a resume or work history, uh, that they send it to hr at rapidview.com. Um, we've grown over 33% over the last 12 months, and um, I'm sure we'll be doing more and better things next year, so it would be interesting to, to see some resumes come in. Um, we always try to focus on hiring local people if at all possible. Um, we also focus on trying to bring back people who we've known from the past who may have been from Fulton County uh, to come back to work in a, in a professional situation. Um, we just recently uh, hired um, our national sales manager. Um, his wife uh, graduated with me in Rochester, at Rochester High School. They've moved back to the community. Um, so it's, it's important for us to try to make sure that we use people locally if at all possible. Thanks for watching this week's RTC 60. Uh, we hope you enjoy and tune in next week.